Hi, good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. Uh, we're a webinar, webcast, online show. Um, the terminology has not been decided, I guess, of what you call us, but whatever it is, um, that we are here live online every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Uh, if you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's okay. We do record the show every week and then post that onto our website, and I'll show you where that is and where you can get those recordings uh, at the end of today's show. Um, we post the recording of the, of the show itself onto our YouTube account. Um, if there's any presentations, like the PowerPoints we have here, um, we post them as well for you to refer to later. And any websites you might have might be mentioned throughout the show, um, I grab them and put into a delicious account where we save um, uh, websites for you. So all that will be available to you after after the show. Um, we do a mixture of things here on the show, book reviews, uh, mini training sessions, interviews, uh, basically anything related to libraries. Really our only criteria is it somehow library related, something libraries are doing, uh, programs, uh, services they're offering, something that could be useful to libraries, websites, resources, anything. Uh, we're very broad in that, so um, sometimes some of our shows you might look at and say, what? Why is this on here? But trust us, we'll get around. It all has to do with libraries in the end. <laughs> That's our only real criteria. Um, we do have um, Nebraska Library Commission staff that sometimes come on and uh, do presentations about things we're doing here in Nebraska or things at the, um, through the Nebraska Library Commission. But we also bring in guest speakers, too. And as we have this morning, to my left here is uh, Vicki Wood. And she is from just up the street. You walked down this morning? I did. Yes. I did. <laughs> just a few blocks away from Lincoln City Libraries. Um, right here in Lincoln, Nebraska, um, and she, um, I don't have, what is your title there? Where are you, I am the, right the coordinator of youth services. Youth services, okay, great. And she did a presentation at our state library conference mm -hmm. last um, October. It was our school, uh, Nebraska Library Association and School Librarians Association conference on this early literacy um, program that they did, which I thought just was very interesting, um, partnering with some local. And so I had asked her to come on to Encompass Live to um, share it with a lot broader audience. So Great. Um, I'll hand over to you, Vicki. Can you just take it away and tell us about your program? Great. Vicky well, thanks book. for having me, Krista. OK, so um, the idea for this program actually was incubated over um, a fair amount of time, as any of you who know tried to institute a big program like this. I there's a lot of thinking and logistics that go into it, but it came from a family literacy conference that I went to um, with a bunch of Lincoln Public Schools people. And um, I just want to put a plug in that, you know, it's great to go to library conferences, but sometimes it's really good to go to conferences that are closely aligned with the kind of work that you do. Mm -hmm. So this family literacy conference was not for librarians, it was for educators, but it was a great conference. And one of the programs I went to there was about a, um, a uh, an organization in Florida that was giving children free books at their um, at their well child visits, and it was based on Reach Out and Read. So some of you might be familiar with that, and they have a an organization that um, helps people provide helps physicians provide books at the well child. Um, checks and so I thought well this we already had a relationship with the health department they don't do well child checks at the health department here in Lincoln but they do do immunization so I met with their people and we figured out a schedule and we'll get to that later about um, about books for children um, and 95% of the families that go to the health department for their immunizations are low-income families and so we knew that we were sort of hitting our target audience. And we also know that sometimes we have trouble getting those families to come into the library for various reasons. It could be transportation. It could be fear of library fines, which we find out is a really huge thing oh, among yeah. low-income families. And also just a lack of familiarity. Now, a lot of the families that go to um, the health department for their immunizations are also refugees and immigrant families. and so. Mm -hmm. They don't really know their way around. And so what we decided to do was to set up a schedule so that if a child got all their immunizations at the health department um, over the course of time from birth to four years old, they would have seven children's books in their home. Nice. And we know some of these kids mm -hmm. have siblings, so they're getting mm -hmm. books. So we tried to get a variety of different books. 
And um, it was uh, funded originally by the Dillon Foundation, which gave us $10,000 to start the program. Mm -hmm. um, the next year, the health department used some monies to pay for it, and then we are funding it again this year. So I'm hoping it keeps bouncing back and forth so we can keep it going. We're in our third year now. So the basic idea is um, making sure that kids receive a, a high quality, age appropriate book um, when they go to their immunization appointment or their home visit. Now the other group that we work with um, in this is Healthy Families America. And that is a very intensive sort of home visit program for families that are most mm -hmm. at risk in terms of neglect and abuse. And there's about 200 families that um, are in this program and we also distribute books to them through the health department, through the home visitors. So this is just some, um, some numbers for you just so you can sort of see what we're working with. And so the list down here is one month to four months. These were the ages at which we were giving out books and these were the numbers that they gave us from the year before. So we were basing that um, on numbers from the year before and we were pur we're purchasing our books through first book so if any of you aren't familiar mm -hmm. with that the link will be available it's um, on one of my slides but first book is a wonderful organization that provides uh, children's books at very low cost and you can even buy them by the crate you can buy them oh, wow. <laughs> in 40s and 20s or you know five books or and um, they are half price or less, and they really specialize in high quality books. These are not, you know, toss off books or, you know, movie tie in books or something. They're really great high quality picture books, hardcovers, board books, and paperbacks. So, so these were the numbers that we were looking at, and we figured to just serve the kids in the immunization clinic for the first year was going to cost us about a little over $6,000. And we had 10 to work with. So Healthy Families America, um, I talked a little bit about this. They actually start prenatally. And mm -hmm. so we also um, chose some books for the prenatal period. And they give the books out in this schedule that's right here. And the cost to purchase those books we figured was going to be about $1,600. So we had already spent um, you know, some of our money to purchase the books for the year. And then um, there were a few other things we wanted to put in with the books. So we have flyers that are um, about child development and they go into each bag. This is an example of the one that's for the prenatal period. And it talks about um, tips for understanding what's happening with your child at that developmental period and ideas for making literacy and books part of your home life. So you can see, you know, one suggestion is to try to get books at garage sales or thrift stores, or if you um, are having a baby shower that you suggest a gift book or a card to a bookstore. And then the importance of reading and talking, the importance of music, um, you know, not worrying about the child putting like that one. the book it's, in their mouth. It's okay if they chew on it. Yeah, they we do. get that question a lot. Yeah. And then um, about it always comes back to going to the local library. So um, in each of these sets of flyers that go inside the book bags, we always really emphasize the importance of um, using the library. And so um, so that's what that looks like, and then we have one for each of the different periods that go that go in the book bag. So we purchased also just Ziploc bags, and so mm -hmm. the book goes in there, mm -hmm. and we also have a library card application. We have this flyer, and we put in a um, preschool story time or our story time yeah. schedule, which we now call our library learning time. So this is this, these are what the flyers look like. You can't read them, obviously. I was taking yeah. pictures of them at the health <laughs> department, but. Um, we use the the read aloud 15 minutes a day logo now. We, we had a different logo for the first couple years that we used it, but we're really all on board now with the 15 minutes a day program. So that's what that looks like. And um, like I said, we include a special library card application in our library learning time schedule. So we provide story times for babies, toddlers, preschoolers, and families. Um, on a regular basis. We do about 40 per week <laughs> at all of our yeah. library branches. And so we have really tried to shift more to doing more in the evenings and weekends for working mm -hmm. families. 
and so we keep these updated schedules in there. And then the library card applications are a different color than we normally use, and so when those come back to us, we know that that came, and it also right. says begin for book, with books in the corner. Now, this is not a foolproof method, so for anybody who thinks, wow, what a cool way of keeping track, <laughs> we still have families, of course, who just drop in and um, yeah. get a library card, and we never know mm -hmm. that it came from this. But Oh, I see. So you color, make them color when they go into these bags, so you right. can try and track exactly. where it's coming from. Oh, nice. Exactly. Okay. So, yeah. And, you know, one, one thing we're finding out is that a lot of families have library cards, and so mm -hmm. that's kind of cool, and yeah. I'll talk a little bit more about that that part of the program later. I like how you've changed your story time to calling it library learning time. Yes. So it's a little bit more, because I, I, I know we know story time, that's the whole purpose is it's exactly. not just come and read a cute story, that it's there's more to it. Well, and we yeah. do a lot of um, education with our families in, in our library learning times too, and that all comes from um, every child ready to read. So we mm -hmm. talk to them a lot about the different principles and what we're trying to do in the story time. And we have amazing storytellers in our system who do a lot of really cool, interesting developmental sorts of things. Mm -hmm. And so we thought it was appropriate to change it to library learning times. I mean, our staff and a lot of our um, people that bring their kids to story time still, of course, call it story time. And that's oh, yeah. a favorite thing. But it's a lot more than stories now. So and anybody who does that knows that. So, um, And then this is the Healthy Homes America and we got a couple great pictures of um, of the caseworkers that work with the families, sort of modeling, reading aloud to the baby. So you can see the babies laying on his stomach there, and the other kids are kind of gathered around. And you know, some of these might seem really second nature. I mean, a lot of us, you know, read to our kids, and we were read to as children. But if mm -hmm. this isn't part of your life and your family tradition, it really does need to be modeled. And so. The family visitors in, um, for Healthy Homes America were so appreciative when they finally had books that they could give the families because they could bring books in, but then they'd have to take them out of the home. Mm. And there's been a lot of research about the importance of having books in the home for early literacy and not just you know, bringing books in occasionally. So actually owning your own book is, is a big deal. Mm -hmm. so, so it's a cool, it, this is a cool um, component to that. And it doesn't have to be one or the other, owning or going to the libraries. I both. mean, when I was growing up, yeah, it was both. We had books that we got for birthdays or holidays and things. And I do remember every Saturday, my dad would take us to the library. So that was our big exactly. thing, too. And yeah. it did just to supplement what we had on our own, yeah. Exactly. So I love this picture, too. So they, they sent me some of these pictures of them sharing the books with the families. And... Um, so part of the part of the project that we did was also to train all the immunization um, physicians assistants and nurses and the Healthy Homes America staff about the principles of Every Child Ready to Read. So they gave me a half of a day, um, and we went through the whole Every Child Ready to Read curriculum so that they would mm -hmm. understand and be able to pass that information on to their families. And it was really interesting because they have all kinds of goals with the families they work with to talk with them about child development and good nutrition and exercise. And they didn't really have a literacy component to it. I mean, they knew books were important and they talked about reading to your kids, but it's become much more a part of the um, of what they do with the families now. And because they do have the free books, it's really it's really a nice thing. So. I love these pictures because they sort of confirm everything great mm -hmm. about this program. <laughs> All right, this is a, a picture of one of the healthcare providers. Um, and you can see here that in the back, she is an immunization nurse and they come in and get their immunization. And I asked her when I took this picture um, what kind of impact it had on the kids. And she said, well, I always tell them this is going to hurt a little bit, but you're going to get a book when you're done. <laughs> and I thought, well, that's really sweet. Yeah. And she's, and, and these, these immunization nurses are all trained to talk to the parents for a, a minute or two about reading aloud and saying, do you read aloud to your child? Do you know how important it is? Mm -hmm. And doing a little bit of education instead of just saying, here's a book. Right. Um, you know, they just don't do that. They do a little education around um, the importance of early literacy, which is nice because they have the families in there for about 
between five and ten minutes, depending on how many children they have and how uh, and how many shots they're getting. So, <laughs> so they have them here. These books are divided by age group. We make sure that we have four or five different selections for each age group because they could have siblings, and we don't mm -hmm. want to make sure, we want to make sure that we, they don't have three copies of the same book. So um, also the kids will have a little bit of choice then. So we um, we try to make sure that we have quite a bit in the different age groups for kids to choose from. And this is an example of some of the current titles that we we have the. The Dr. Seuss books are for the three and four year olds. Um, we, we break it down by the different ages. The baby animals book and any of those big word books have probably been the most popular books for families. And they're also really great for immigrant re refugee families because mm -hmm. they name things, oh, everyday right. things, and it really helps the parents learn English too. And I will mention that we do buy mm -hmm. books in other languages. We buy Spanish books. We've recently added Arabic. Um, uh, Burmese Karen, or mm -hmm. Karen. Mm -hmm. I, I've heard it's yeah. said both ways. Okay. Um, French, because there's yeah. quite a few, we have quite a few oh. African immigrants who speak oh, French. Right. Yep. And so that was a new one. And um, Vietnamese. Mm -hmm. And I think, yeah, that's it. Those are the five languages. So we get those from a different um, company. We get Spanish ones from First Book. And then there's one called Star Bright Books, where, and, um, and uh, Language Lizard are the two places that we go to for the, um, the books in other, other languages. And so here is um, a picture of first book. Um, you can get on their website. If you get an account with them, you go to the, what's called the marketplace and you'll see a listing of what's available. Books kind of come and go. Um, one of the books that we used for the prenatal period was Tana Hoban's Black and White, and we bought, you know, 150 of them. And when, when they were gone, we went back and tried to get some more, and they were gone. So yeah. you kind of don't know the publishers decide, but really amazing what great high-quality books you can get. And there's always a very, very good selection. And like I said, you can buy them. Um, in boxes and crates of 40 or 52 and so we do buy a lot of them at once just because they'll run out through the mm -hmm. year. Um, the day that I was there to take pictures this little boy had actually arrived he and his family had arrived from Iraq the day before mm -hmm. and they had just come to the clinic to make sure that they were all up on their shots so that they could start school and he and his brother came out of the room and they were showing each other, look, I got a book, I got a book. And so it was a great photo opportunity for nice, me. Yeah. Um, and this little boy and his family um, and his brother, of course, had a different book because he was a year younger than him. And so that was a great introduction, I think, to, to coming to America and going home with a great children's book. And um, getting shots not so bad. Yes, get, exactly. Get, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so the, okay, the other thing is that this is another component of the program, and this also came from um, Reach Out and Read. So if any of you are familiar with Reach Out and Read, they, they also um, have volunteers who read aloud to kids in the waiting room, and this is a twofold thing. So one is to read to kids because it's a good thing to do and the kids enjoy it. They usually spend about 15 minutes in the waiting room waiting for their... Um, to get their shots, and so it's a great thing for that, but it's also great modeling for the families, and so this particular picture is a volunteer we have named Pearl, and right now we have volunteers from 9 to 11, um, Monday through Thursday, which is their busy time, and we'll see in the pictures coming up a little bit kind of how this is set up, but the health department set up a sort of circular um, little seating place and Pearl will spread out all of her books um, with the covers out there and then just sort of invites children to come to her and depending on how shy they are or how scared they are or how outgoing they are they come and she she reads to them and so that is her volunteer job and so we have four different women right now that read at the health department from 9 to 11 in the morning and it really is awesome to see the parents watch their kids react to the books and you know who knows if they read aloud to their kids already or not mm -hmm. 
But if they don't, it's just super excellent sort of modeling mm -hmm. that behavior. So, and here you get a better a better idea about Pearl's oh, little yeah. space there. So this is in the the health department waiting room, and she's reading aloud to this little girl who also you can see is holding on to a couple she's books that she's waiting <laughs> to have read to her, which is nice. And um, usually, you know, you can't see it here, but she does kind of spread the books out. The other nice thing about the waiting room was when we first started, came into the health department a few years ago, they didn't have any books in their waiting room. Mm -hmm. They had a TV mm -hmm. and they had a few toys, but they didn't have any books. And so we um, donate about 30 to 40 children's books every other month to them to have in their waiting room. And of course, some of the books, you know, they disappear, they mm -hmm. go home with the families, which is fine. They're mostly things that have been donated to the library that we can't use for one reason or another. So the waiting room has become sort of a little literacy hub where it used to be just a place where people sat and watched sat TV and yeah. waited to get their <laughs> to get their shots. So and here's another picture of Pearl reading. So the great thing about Pearl and our volunteers is they're super flexible. You know, some kids have really short attention spans. She'll start to read a book mm -hmm. and then they'll run and get another one. And, <laughs> um, or they'll get called in the middle yeah. to go, you know, their have turn. their shots. Yeah. yeah. So it's really nice that to uh, have that flexibility. So, I like the little short benches that yes, got there for the kids. It's size. kind of, and then the kids like to get in the middle of it. You know, it's just kind of a fun, a fun place for them to be. So, and here's Pearl reading again in those. So this is a really important part of the of the program, and we've also trained our volunteers to talk to the families about the library and library cards. So they have little mm -hmm. um, library cards that show all the locations of the library and they will approach the families if they speak English and say, you know, do you have a library card? Do you visit the library? Do you know where the closest library is? So in addition to being, um, you know, a read aloud volunteer, they also are kind of ambassadors for us about the library because we always are trying to bring it back to that and to make families understand it's not just about free books, you know, through the health department, but it's about making the library a regular, part of your life mm -hmm. and visiting the library regularly. So. so these are some of the contacts um, that that I, I talked about earlier. So reach out and read if you want to know more about their organization, which is what this is based on. Um, you can go and find out about them. Now basically Reach Out and Read is an organization that they don't provide the books. They can some they don't provide the books and the funding. They can sometimes help you get discounted books, but they mm -hmm. sort of have, they're the structural program, and we decided not to go through them just because they um, are organized around well-child visits as opposed to um, right. as opposed to immunizations. So we based it on Reach Out and Read, so to know more about their story, it's an interesting organization. First Book is where we get um, our books, which I just can't say enough about First Book. I think they are a great organization. And and then the readaloud.org um, is the 15 minutes a day initiative that's a nationwide initiative, which we have definitely gotten onto in the last year, and we're doing a lot of promotion around that. And then that is my contact information. If anybody wants to email me or call me, or has more questions about how the program is set up or how it's run. Um, and I'm happy to send out handouts to people if they want to see what they look like. And I don't care if anybody copies them and uses them. It's mm -hmm. fine. Nothing that we did is, um, you know, particularly brilliant or ne needing to be protected or anything like that. So that's kind of our, our, uh, our contact information. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, oh. Back, back up. Yeah. yeah, there we go. Okay, so cool. that is that is mm -hmm. it, and I, I assume we're going to have some questions. <laughs> sure. So. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, so if anybody does have any questions, um, just go ahead and type them into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface. I can see that here on my laptop, and um, and grab that for you. Um, like I said, if you have a microphone, let us know, and we can unmute you, and you can use your microphone to ask a question as well. Uh, so this this program that you do, 
this is a our year round thing. This is just this isn't like at a certain like there's the summer reading program. Right. No, this is and we're in our third year now, and I'm hoping that every year we just hope that we can get enough funding to keep it going. Um, Mm -hmm. It costs between seven and ten thousand dollars for this partnership in particular, which is a a lot of kids. Um, Mm -hmm. If you remember the earlier slides, we kind of looked at the numbers. Right. Yeah. Um, We are looking actually right now towards expanding it to some other um, health care providers in Lincoln. So one Mm -hmm. would be the People's City um, or is it the People's Health Center, PHC, mm-hmm. yes. um, which is not associated with the Peace. People's City Mission, yeah. but they also provide um, health care to lots of low-income mm-hmm. people and have recently expanded into what's called the Health 360 mm-hmm. um, building. We, we also are working with the Urban Indian Group and, um, and one other group um, that provides health care for low-income kids. Mm-hmm. And so we have a big grant put out there to basically double what we're doing right now. So in addition to the health department, but the health Mm -hmm. department, this was a model that we're using and saying, Mm -hmm. you know what, we can do this in a, in a bigger, we can do this in the bigger part of the community and we can do it very cheaply. Mm -hmm. Um, Basically if it's $3 times seven books, so for $25, you can assume, you can assure Mm -hmm. a child will have, enough books to make a decent little library for their, and if they have siblings, then of Mm -hmm. course they have those books too. So it's a pretty small investment for a big payoff, I think. Mm -hmm. And it seems like you said you you got a new grant that you've Well, we're working on right now. We haven't heard yet if we, if we got it or not, but if we did get it, it will provide funding for the health department for the next year. Plus these other groups that we're working Mm -hmm. with through our early literacy partnership. And because we kind of know how to do it now, because mm-hmm. we've been doing it for three years at the health department, it's going to be right. pretty easy to administer as opposed to like trying to start something from the ground up. So. This is definitely the kind of thing I think a lot of grant providing organizations would be wanting to, you know, say yes to this kind of program. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then the nice thing about it too, is that all of the money goes directly to books and to handouts and things. There's no administrative. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's part of my salary to, to organize mm-hmm. the program, and so that's also nice because a lot of funders right. are they're looking at you know paying overhead and paying staff people, and this really mm-hmm. all the money for this would just go directly back into the community, right? And yeah. to putting books in kids' hands, which of course Absolutely. is a wonderful and important thing. Mm-hmm. And it's it's good that you're working with lots of different types of groups. And that's something I think that would be good to, to have other people think about is. Like you said, you saw this was, you've got to look at what, where is this kind of thing being done in your community? Mm-hmm. Um, so which organizations should you be trying to connect with? Mm-hmm. Um, that do it. it might not be your health department, or like you said, they, they didn't, you guys, we didn't have the same setup here as the right. one you saw at your, at the um, presentation that you went to, right. the conference you went to, so. Right. Yeah. And when I did the presentation at NLA, there were several people in smaller communities in Lincoln, I mean, in Nebraska, who thought, yeah, we could do this, you know, through our, you know, main pediatrician's office and, mm-hmm. you know, and, and do it that way. I mean, the community is small enough. Sometimes there's, you know, one or two doctors or whatever. And right. it's really just a matter of getting the the pediatrician or the doctor's office or the clinic on board. Mm-hmm. And it's not that hard to do. Because that's, that's what I was going to ask when you reached out to the Lincoln City. So how, how did that Work out. I mean, oh, the health department yeah. loved the idea, and I think they were kind of already thinking, you know, we're not doing quite enough in this area, but of course they're, you know, they're like all agencies where, you know, feel, people feel overburdened mm-hmm. and, you know, too much to, to do, and so I think they were very happy for us to come in, and it's just, it's been a really, really great partnership. Yeah, someone who could have the expertise to help them right. get the, yeah right get something. More and then the what what happens is when we order the books, the boxes go directly to them, and they have a staff person and some volunteers there who then bag everything mm-hmm. up and make sure that everything came in, and and then yeah, okay, divvy them up mm-hmm. among the immunization um, rooms. And then they also mm-hmm. let me know when they're running low on certain things, if they're running out of four-year-old books or mm-hmm. whatever, you know, yeah. and then we can purchase some more if we still have money in the account. So. That's nice. They, they, they have staff on their side, too, so that you're not having to go to their offices to yes. you know, get the, like the, the logistics of it taken care of. Yeah, yeah. So it's and, and that's where I think it's easy to 
to expand on something when you've been doing it for a while and you kind of see how it works and then it's mm -hmm. easier to put it into other places also. So. Mm -hmm. Um, we do have a question of the audience. Someone wants to say, wants to know, um, what one piece of advice would you give a librarian looking to emulate this program? Ooh, uh, um, I think that if you're going to be approaching a doctor's office or a clinic, that you want to make sure that you have some background information about the importance of early literacy. Mm -hmm. um, my first you meeting. Sell it. Yeah, my yeah. first meeting I brought some things from some slides and some different statistics from Every Child Ready to Read about early brain development and mm -hmm. literacy and how essential it is and how you have kind of have these windows when kids are young and if the windows, if you don't get in there, it's it. a yeah. little late. And so, and I think that I've noticed a lot more physicians, at least my friends that have young kids have told me that they're their pediatricians and the PAs and the nurses talk to them about literacy now. Like mm -hmm. when my kids who are now in their 20s were growing up, mm -hmm. um, they talked a lot about bike helmets. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. And uh, so that, you know, it's become more of an issue, I think. And I think a lot more pediatricians are actually aware of it. The 15 minutes a day program actually has a spoke, their spokesperson is a pediatrician. Mm -hmm. And so it's definitely something that's sort of trending right now that, mm -hmm. um, that pediatricians are becoming aware of this and they're, and that it's more than just reading readiness. There's bonding that goes on between the parent and the child. Oh yeah. There's language acquisition. I mean, there's all kinds of things that happen when you read aloud to your kids. And so, um, and it's cheap and it's easy and it's mm -hmm. free. <laughs> it's all good, you know? So I yeah. think that, I don't think it's a, a particularly hard sell, but I think yeah. having some of that background information and maybe statistical things behind you would, would work well. Mm -hmm. And then also maybe having a little bit of a plan, like, you know, instead mm -hmm. of saying, well, we're gonna put this back on you to figure out saying, we kind of know how we might be able to do this. and. And then, um, you know, of course, seeking funding is the same thing. You, um, mm -hmm. It's good to have a program put together to know how much everything is going to cost. And it's relatively cheap. I mean, we feel like we get a lot of bang for our buck in this program. So Yeah, a lot of these websites, which I've been catching them, as I said, and putting them into our delicious account here, great resources for, um, like you said, getting books, a lot of them at once. Yes. Yes. From all these like I said, it's about know. an average of three dollars per book, and you're mm -hmm. talking yeah, about a yeah. really nice, like an Eric Carle board book or something. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's a very um, and, and we've been doing the program between seven and ten thousand dollars a year for those for the kids. That's not bad, yeah. For how how many kids, as you said in the beginning, that you're going to be yeah that you have to work with yeah here in Lincoln and of course in smaller towns would be less you'd have to do right it. you, know, you just got to figure out so where so you had gotten the statistics on how many kids from the health department right. to figure out what yes to do. they were very on board and so when we were yeah. setting up the budget they sent me all their statistics from the year before now I have to tell you that I've been in contact through the 15 minutes a day program with some people who are doing a program called restaurant readers which is another interesting thing that we're looking into and there's a woman, I believe she lives in North Carolina, who has gotten several of her, she lives in a relatively small town, and she's gotten several of the restaurant owners to agree. She takes books and she takes them apart and laminates them and then puts them on the tables and then encourages parents to oh. read aloud to their kids while they're waiting for their restaurant meals. Huh. So this is another cool. really innovative sort of thing that, that people are doing around um, mm -hmm. encouraging parents to read aloud to their kids. I know there's a, there's a, a restaurant in town here that um, gives kids books, just at books that they have to read when the kids come oh, in. Oh, um, which one is Stauffer's it? Cafe. Oh, I didn't know we that. We take our niece and nephews there um, pretty often, but whenever the, I don't know what the age limit is, but they'll, you know, you'll come in and sit down. They don't ask. They just bring you menus and the kids get a book and it's a random one oh, sometimes. Nice. And they're, they're a little beat up sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes they're not. And I, I should ask, where do they get them from? Yeah. Where, but there's, a, that's, it's, you know, some restaurants do like a coloring page or something that yeah. they have somehow decided we're going to collect books and everyone gets a little book Good to read. And when you're done, you leave it. And um, then for the next kid. Good deal. And I don't know where they got the idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a really great idea. So, yeah, I think we'll be seeing more of those kinds of things. Um, 
So someone does want to know um, when you did contact the health department, um, what statistics did you actually ask for from them? Did it say on the slide or? Um, did you, yeah, did you, we can go back yeah, to that. Back to and see. Uh, let's go back to that. So what I, we wanted to know numbers so we could figure out how much money we needed. And so, um, so this was the, these were the numbers. So basically, that was the 255 kids between the ages of one to four months. So we wanted to add up those numbers. And then um, we figured that was how many books we were going to need for the year. And then the cost at about $3 per book. So that's how we came out with the $6,170. Um, and of course, you know, it varies every year because, you know, different kids come in and different groups come in. But we figured that the numbers were going to be fairly consistent. So we rounded them, you know, rounded them up and then bought books in those categories. Mm -hmm. um, right now, it seems as if they, they, are, they need books the most for older kids, the two to mm -hmm. three and the three to four, which was not such a big number before. Mm -hmm. So we are buying more of the older kids' picture books now. And I don't know if that's just a change in demographics about kids that are coming the into the health department for whatever up, reason. Yeah. but. But it's flexible enough, and you know, and there's no big age cutoff anyway. I mean, you yeah. can give a four-year-old a three-year-old book if you need oh, to, and yeah, it's they, not, you know, they're they're very, <laughs> um, you know, I mean, they're they vary a lot along the age spectrum, yeah. so they're pretty flexible about that too. So this is you get, when you went to the health department. This is specifically for the the ages the low income. So this isn't necessarily for every child. In this is for the immunization. So no, the it's for is, every kid that comes into, that comes because, into the clinic. Yeah. Because already every kid that comes to the clinic um, is, like I said, 95% of people who bring their kids to the health mm -hmm. department for immunizations are low income families. And they don't have their eligible. own pediatrician or doctor to go right. to for this. Right. Okay. Right. So you'd ask them for, you know, give us the numbers from the previous year so we can right. figure out what we're talking about here. Right. And then the Healthy Homes America, um, we had 455. Um, we needed 455, so that this is the kids that they serve in that program. Um, so there were 54 prenatal, um, 81 that were in the four to six month age range. So that was how we how we decided to to do the purchasing. And this is just happens to be this this organization is a national organization that right. It's a federal program, and, right? And may or may not be in other years. exactly. Yeah, you'd have to figure yeah, out. Yeah, and they where, work with the kids yeah. from they work with the parents prenatally through the third birthday and the immunization clinic. We go up to five years, so it's a little bit different numbers. And so once again, we just said, tell us last year how many mm -hmm. people you served. And it's a federal program and they have a cap. I think they can only take on 200 families or 250 families oh, or something okay. like that. Right. So that would not necessarily be expanding. Mm -hmm. So that was how we budgeted for that program. So did, how many children, do you have numbers of how many children in total you actually did I mean, do they, are they keeping track of they like, how are. many children do you give mixed books to? <laughs> yeah, they keep track, and they and we kind of get an annual an annual count. And actually, it's quite it's very close to this. And the books tend mm -hmm. to last about a year, sometimes around nine months. They'll say, oh, we're running out of a certain age, and they'll kind of be shifting things around. Yeah. But um, the numbers have been staying pretty consistent. It's just that the age range has shifted a little bit. So how many in total from each of these different groups do you think? How many kids have you? Um, I don't in each know. Year. <laughs> I I mean I would have to. I we're figuring that we're giving or we're giving away over two thousand books a year, and then and then okay. we're break. You know the age ranges mm -hmm. are are fairly fluid, but really from birth up to five. That's you know mm -hmm. that it's spread out. It's spread out in different ways every year. So this is the third year. So. If we're giving away about 2,000 books a year, then we've given away six or 7,000 books probably up till now, so. Nice. Yeah. And getting them at such good prices too, that's just, if you go out to like go to Barnes & Noble yourself to get these books, they're not gonna cost $3. No, <laughs> no, and it's really worth finding out more about the first book organization, because yeah. it really is a great, a really great organization. And some of these are, would be then, since you're doing it for multiple years, the same, children coming back right. again if the families come back and right there, that's nice yeah we figured if they yeah. come as infants and they stay and get all their immunizations at the health clinic they'll mm -hmm. have seven books by, by the, the time end. they're five years old right which is kind of a nice little starter mm -hmm. home library yeah. so and you're only three years into it so they still have a few more years for yeah. the ones that started out as as infants to go yeah. yep 
Yeah. All right. That was all the questions that we had typed in so far. Um, we still have time. Anybody have any other questions? Anything else you want to know about the program, the books, the money, how it's been going? Um, and you said the health department has been very. Have they had any feedback from the families about it? That they well, yes, we did a we, well. We did an informal survey, survey with the healthcare providers, and mm -hmm. that was very positive. And that you know, of course, the people that work at the clinic and the people that are the home visitors were are thrilled to have these books because they have had books in the past, but it was very sporadic. Like sometimes mm -hmm. they would have. 100 books and then they would all be gone for three months and you know they would get them in different quantities but it was never when a people do donations thing. sometimes it's a one-time thing yes not as an ongoing as a as the program like this one is exactly is nice. yeah and then um there they did an informal survey of some of the families over about a two or three week period and it's really, really hard because there are language barriers. Mm -hmm. And the other problem is that this is a very mobile group. And so following up with people is difficult because people don't always stay in Lincoln or they don't stay uh, at the same address yeah. or they go and get a physician so they don't come back to the, right. the health department. So we're we're kind of right now just trusting that it is <laughs> it's a good thing and that we're having some good results from it. But we mm -hmm. also... Um, actually, this week I'm meeting with somebody from the university. They they got a big um, bunch of money at the university to study early childhood education, and we're going to have them design some kind of feedback um, for this particular program for the mm -hmm. grant that we're working on right now to expand it. So if mm -hmm. we do expand it, we'll be working in some kind of um, process for evaluating if this made a difference right. in kids' lives. And it's kind of like the library learning times, like we've always known that this is good for kids, but it's so hard mm. to measure what that means. To make it concrete, yeah. Right, exactly. and there is, but actually the last 10 years, there's been a lot of good research about those kinds of things, so it's nice to have that. And you can find it online, so that's another thing. Mm. If you need to argue your case and you're looking for research, there actually is research now, whereas before mm -hmm. there was not so it's much. It's just anecdotal so. and like, yeah. of course we know it's a good idea. Exactly. But, yeah. but certain people, they want to know the numbers and the yeah. like a s official study, yeah. Yeah, and I think um, every child ready to read, most people that work in children's services know all about yeah. that and that's made a huge impact because it's very based on scientific evidence mm -hmm. and there's been a lot of research that's come out of that too, so. Um, you did mention this a little bit earlier, but Austin wants to know, do you have any statistics on increased library patronage with this program? No. Like, does that I wish that we did. We get the, coded, yes, but we also know up. that yeah. that does not represent all the people who come in and use it. So, no, I would love to have that information, though. I would love to um, do follow-up with some of the families where we find out, did this, did this, influence you to get a library card? Mm -hmm. Do you use the library more regularly now? Um, one report I got from the women who work at the um, reading aloud in the mornings is that when they ask the families that about between like 50 and 75 percent say they already have a library card and they use that's the good. library. So that is yeah. very good. Yeah, um, and that's coming, all of yeah. course self-reporting. So, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you don't really know, but um, I think they were surprised at that. Um, so, and you know, when, when immigrants and refugees come to town, which is a big portion of the population that, that uses the health department, one of the first places that they go on their tours is to the public library. And, okay. you know, and the public library could also be very much a new concept and a new idea. I've heard that too, that a lot of, they don't understand the whole borrowing right. and that it's free and that you, right. know, you take it, you bring it back, get something else. Exactly. Whole, yeah. Yeah. So, so I think that, you know, the families are familiar with the idea of the library. Now, whether they're thinking about it in terms of their children, that, you know, is, is what we're trying to accomplish mm -hmm. really at the, at the, um, at the health department. 
Um, so that families are like, oh, this is where you get children's books and this is how you read aloud to families and those kinds of things. So mm -hmm. I'm hoping that we will be able to follow some families. The, the ultimate greatest thing would be if we could follow families over a long period of time and see about their kids' readiness then when they go to school. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, of course, it, yeah. all that kind of testing is confidential, and, you know, it would be difficult for us to actually gauge that kind of thing. But we have mm -hmm. to think that when families have books in their home, they read more, and when they read more, their children do better when they go to school. Mm -hmm. I mean, those there things are studies already done each other. about yeah. that, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So following up on those studies that have already been done, here's we're doing this, and we know it will help from these, but it'd be nice to see if ours helped as well. Exactly. But yeah, it is. And I'm, I'm hoping that the university numbers. people who know how to do research, which of course, yeah, I don't, um, will have some good suggestions for us about following the families and getting feedback from them. So they should, yeah, of how you're supposed to do. Not human trials, but you know, testing with yes. people and following up on that, and the whole, like you said, privacy and all of those issues. Right, and yeah. also a really mobile group of people who don't always stay right. in the same place for a long time, or move, or change phone numbers, and those kinds of things that the follow up can be difficult. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, trying to tr keep track of them all. That, I think part of that would be potentially at the very beginning reaching out to the family saying, "We want to yes. see if this is working. Would you be willing to?" Yes since they might move, keep in touch with us and let right. us know where you've gone so that we can keep right. up with, you know, tracking what's going on and how well, it's and been affecting you. The other thing is, is that for, you know, for partnerships, you have to figure out ways to make, you know, you have what you want to accomplish and you have to make sure that it's easy for the partners to do it and it's beneficial to them in the same way. So mm -hmm. what we would have to get at that point is kind of buy in from them that they would do some of this follow through for us because they're the ones that have the contact with mm -hmm. the families. Right. And the so health department and yeah. Right. So that's the other thing that we'll have to structure in there is a way to have the people that are working one on one with the families, whether it's in the immunization clinic or the Healthy Families America, buy in enough to get us some some good mm -hmm. feedback, so that's mm -hmm. the that's the hard part. Yeah, you think they want it for themselves too. Yes, definitely. Because yeah. they're involved in it. Yeah. All right. Uh, nothing else has come while we were chatting. Any other last minute questions you guys want to ask? We have a few more minutes left in our hour. Any other last minute things you want to wrap up and let people know about? Um, well, I kind of started out by saying that, you know, I think it's really great for people to go to conferences that are mm. closely aligned to what they do, but maybe think not. Think outside the box, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because that's kind of where mm. the, the idea for this program came from. Um, and another thing is that if you want to get something like this set up, it's really great to think ahead about three to five years because there's lots of programs that people will fund for one year and then you're kind of like, uh, like you'd like to keep it going, now what? but there's, yeah. yeah. So thinking a little bit farther ahead in terms of, um, of funding is sometimes good. So if you can divide it up over several years to make sure that the program mm -hmm. has a bigger impact, um, that's also a good thing. Um, and then, like we were just talking about, Krista, the whole balance with partnerships where, you know, we want, the library wants to reach these families. The health mm -hmm. department, yeah, it's all good. Yeah. Um, how do you set it up so that it they they could administer the program for you without too much burden on their staff and their time? Yeah. Right now, we seem to have the perfect mix. They're very happy for us to order the books, take care of the money mm -hmm. part of it, to do the printing and provide it. They are happy to pack all the books and get them all out. Which is that's something that libraries know how to do is exactly. book ordering and finding out where to get all these organizations. That's what they're there for. Exactly. And that's something good. That you know, this is our expertise, and we'll combine with you to yeah. Exactly. So so that's kind of the secret to any partnership is figuring out how to have both sides sort of have their needs met with the least amount of impact in terms of their resources and what they can do for, you know, for, as in terms of their workflow. So mm -hmm. for me, I have to say personally, this is one of my, you know, I've worked in libraries for 25 years. This is one of my greatest loves is this program. <laughs> 
because mm -hmm. we've tried so many traditional ways to bring families, um, lo lots of low-income families, into the library and haven't always been successful. Mm -hmm. And so the idea of going where families are makes so much sense. Yeah, that's the thing that a lot of libraries are doing. It's, it's not just in your building, go right. where the people are, do more outreach. <laughs> Physically right. bring the stuff, the books, the, the, the right. whatever your program you're doing to where they, they need it. And, that's what the library can be too. It doesn't have to just be you've got to come to right. us where we are. And yeah. And the other reason this program made so much sense to me is because your pediatrician or the person that you go to for health care is often a trusted person that mm -hmm. you would listen to. Oh, uh, yep. And so Rather than that's, just some strange librarian telling exactly. you to do this. Exactly. <laughs> like librarians are always going to say you should read to your kids. But when, you're, when your health care worker or a pediatrician says this to you, this is important for your child's development. Mm -hmm you're going to listen yeah. a little bit more. And then, you know, like with the Healthy Families America, where they've been to the Every Child Ready to Read training, and they know mm -hmm. how to do reading aloud and dialectic reading, and they can model some of these things mm -hmm. for the families, and then the modeling that happens in the waiting room, right. like all those things together, um, I think could, you know, make a powerful difference. So, so yeah, so mm -hmm. of the things that, yeah. that, that I do in my job and that I do all the time, this is one of the most satisfying to me um, because I feel like it really can make a huge difference. You can see it, yeah. That it's, and yeah. yeah, and like I said, the day I went to go take the pictures and those yeah. those kids came out of the waiting room and excitedly showing each other their books, <laughs> and I thought, oh, it was like they did that it just works. for me here today <laughs> so I could take these, take these photos. But but it is exciting and um, and I think that it also is, it also shows the, sort of the importance of the library and the community beyond just our buildings and out in the community, mm -hmm. which is where we are a lot too. And people yeah. don't recognize that. They think we're kind of in our buildings and not out there in the community as much. So it's important from that perspective too. Yeah, we are a lot more, even more and more. Absolutely. Yeah. So I welcome anybody if they want to, you know, from my contact slide, if they want to send mm -hmm. me an email, or follow up with a phone call. I'm happy to share any informa more information that I have. And yeah, you can go back to that last slide if you want. Okay. Yeah, just wrap up with that. Um, and these slides, um, it's okay if we grab these slides and we'll yes. put them on our, yeah, we'll post these slides yeah. available to you guys as well so you'll be able to see um, all the links and the contact info will be available yep. afterwards as well. So it doesn't look like anything else came in while we were just wrapping up here. So I think we'll we'll wrap up the show for okay. today. Yeah, we're almost at the top of the hour again. Perfect timing. <laughs> great. Um, so thank you very much, Vicki. That was really Thanks, great. Krista. Like I said, I'd seen this presentation at our conference and thought it was really cool programs. Um, uh, getting in, especially the partnership part. I always like, like you said, libraries reaching out to do something new and different in some different areas. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you everyone for attending. Um, the show ha is being recorded, as I said, and will be posted to our website uh, probably this afternoon, depends on how everything goes. <laughs> um, when we get things processing and uploading and whatnot. Um, I'll let you all, all know. I'll send you everyone an email, let you know when it is available, and it'll be available on our Encompass Live website. And I'll um, bring that up now here. Let's see. There we go. This is our library commission website. Let me grab this one. Mm -hmm. Use the right keyboard. Um, and you can either search for Encompass Live here on our site, or if you also just search for Encompass Live online anywhere with your um, search engine of choice. So far, we are the only thing calling ourselves that. Yay. Yay. So we come up <laughs> first still. Um, on our Encompass Live site, our archives are upcoming shows, and our archives are right here underneath our upcoming ones. And let's see, last week we had Best New Teen Books, and this is what we'll have for, this is just from last week's, we'll have the recording available, the slides will be here, and I actually have links to the websites that um, Vicki mentioned throughout the show, all the different places to get books and everything, and all the different other programs out there, um, and a delicious account all collected together, um, they will all be there. Uh, 
So that will be wrapping up for today's show. And next week's show actually could be helpful for you if you're thinking about doing this yourself. Mm -hmm. um, library Improvement Grants uh, for 2017 here at the Nebraska Library Commission. We do give grants to libraries in the state. So if you are a Nebraska library interested in I want to do any sort of program like the Begin With Books or anything else, um, tune in next week to find out from Richard Miller, our Library Development Director, um, who's going to talk about the um, upcoming um, season of grants for this that will be um, coming available. So you can see how to apply, what they're for, um, get tips and tricks on how to um, get yourself a library improvement grant from the Library Commission. So definitely sign up for that one and any of our other shows that we have coming up. Um, I've got other ones in the works. We're always adding to the schedule, so you'll see more added here each month. Um, this is not the only, this is not like the end because <laughs> it's all that's up there. Um, so keep an eye on our webpage and you'll see which new shows we have added to the schedule. Uh, and Compass Live is also on Facebook, so if you are a big Facebook user, do um, pop over there and give us a like. We post reminders of what new shows are coming up. Um, let's see here. No, I don't want us line in right now. Um, when our recordings are available, here I uh, posted a reminder to log in for today's show. So um, if you are a um, big Facebook user, do um, like us over there, and you'll get reminders about what we're doing each week. Other than that, that wraps up for this morning. Thank you again, everyone, for attending. Thank you for being here with us. This is great. And we will see you next time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye. <laughs>